Welcome back, everybody. This is kicking it in the second half, and we got some crazy stuff going on this week with the NBA getting closer and closer to that trade deadline as far as trades are concerned in the buyout market. I'm D, back again with Groot, and my co-host today is... Say what up, Hugh. Hey, how's everybody doing? Again, I think they're doing all right. Good. So let's Good. get into it. To, uh, we're going to talk about, you know, definitely the the big names and some of the smaller names. I got a, a list here of a few players. Let's let's see what it is. It's Aaron Gordon, uh, Lonzo Ball. Uh, the Raptors have a few names there with uh, Kyle Lowry and uh, Norman Powell, and we have John Collins from the Hawks, as well as maybe Kelly Oubre and Victor Oladipo. Uh, those players are j- just to name a few, but mainly some headline players there that's been in the news as far as trade rumors uh if not here recently all season long would you agree yeah yeah definitely let's start off with the magic because like i said i mentioned aaron gordon and you know he plays the power forward position for that team but they're willing to not only trade him but they're looking at potentially trading some of their other guys like evan fournier uh terrence ross and possibly even uh nikola uh, vucevic what do you think about that? Because Vucevic was an all-star this year. So, you know, it looks like the Magic could be clearing house either for a full-blown rebuild or maybe they're trading some of their pieces and keeping some of the pieces. But it seems like, you know, basically what they have left of their original uh, starting unit, it's up for sale. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, real quick to touch on them. Yeah, I don't. I, f- I feel like they should keep Vucevic. I feel like, you know, he's a, an amazing talent. Like you said, he made the all-star game. You know, he's one of the top centers in the league. I feel like I feel like it'd be a mistake to trade them. I think that he's the, the one, you know, the one really good thing that Orlando has going for him. I know besides that, their team's kind of falling apart. But I really like Vucevic there. Uh, I think they should hold on to him. Now, all those other guys, yeah, it just sounds like they're going for pretty much a complete rebuild, uh, trying to ship some of those guys out. But uh, all those guys make sense to me, except – except Vucevic. I mean, I know they could get a lot for him, but uh, I just think he's too good to give up. I would I would hang on to him if I was Orlando, but yeah, everybody else, I kind of understand. Let's move on to an, uh, a more interesting guy, maybe in your perspective, is Lonzo Ball, because he was in the, uh, the news, you know, a month or two ago about being traded possibly to the Warriors. Um, but what I've found out through some research is that uh, the Bulls and the Hawks are potentially interested in him. Um, I think the Hawks trade, if they were to do that, uh, would involve the player uh, Cam Reddish. But, um, oh, and also the Clippers. The Clippers are interested in him. You know, Lonzo Ball could potentially go on back to L.A., but just on, you know, the other side, on the other team. What do you think about the move of Lonzo Ball? Um. Yeah, you know, they've been talking about Lonzo getting traded for a while. So, I, you know, I think something will happen before Thursday, the deadline. Uh, out of those teams you mentioned, I, I honestly, I think the Clippers would be the best fit. I, uh, you know, the, the Bulls got, you know, Kobe White and uh, trying to develop him. And uh, what's the other team you said? The you said Bulls the and the Hawks. The Hawks. the Hawks, yeah. Yeah, you know, they got Trey Young, uh, you know, as their main their main guy there. So, I think he would, he would fit in real well with uh, – Kawhi and uh, PG and uh, LA going back to LA like you said I like I like that fit there uh, you know he started out the season kind of slow but you know he's he's came on as of late been playing a lot better ball I love his vision you know I think uh, Lamelo is probably the better shooter better all around talent but Lonzo I I think his vision is probably in my opinion his greatest strength uh, his um, his passing ability so so yeah I really like the the sound of him being in LA again but for the other team i think that would be interesting if uh the warriors kind of pick back up on that i know there are some other players that are in the news that they're looking at but i think for what they could possibly <laughs> offer to get him uh wouldn't be too bad at all because they might have a chance of getting lonzo ball and uh steven adams you know a big guy for down low uh playing the center position because they're very short-handed there i mean if you could do something where you can get both of those players from a team that's willing to coordinate a trade with you, then that could be a plus there for the Warriors. 
which segues me into the next guy, uh, Victor Oladipo. He's been in the news as far as uh, a player that the Warriors were looking at. I think the talks might be off for that as far as between the, the two teams negotiating because what the uh, Houston Rockets are wanting for Oladipo is a potential top three protected pick and or James Wiseman um, and maybe another pick in there. So basically like a first rounder and James Wiseman. Like, what do you think about them doing that? Like, how do you feel about the Warriors uh, just dropping that conversation? Like, I feel like definitely the Rockets are asking for way too much for a guy who has somewhat of an injury history. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, being, being a Warriors fan, um, you know, the, the thought about getting Oladipo, you know, Oladipo is an amazing player. Uh, we all know what he can do, but yeah, like you touched on, he is, he's injury prone and, you know, that's, that's not really something we need right now with all the other players we have that are injury prone currently with Stephen Clay. But, uh, Another thing to think about, I mean, if we were to get him, what would his role, you know, be next year? When when Clay's healthy, I mean, I would just – would you keep him for the rest of this year, trade him in the offseason, or would you maybe try to move somebody to to, to a forward position or, or what really uh, their take on that would be? But uh, Let's yeah, just I say this. You. If it didn't cost too much, uh, how about they give them a Kelly Oubre and maybe yeah. something else for Oladipo? How, yeah. how would that turn the tables for you? I mean, as I mean yeah. As I, how, I how would you feel about them pursuing that? I mean, yeah, that'd be a lot more uh, worth it, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, a, a top three pick and James Wiseman, I think that's a lot. You know, you took James Wiseman so high, uh, you know, last season, and, uh, you know, you wanted him to be part of your future. You wanted to develop him. You know, he was going to start out kind of slow with playing so few college games. So, I mean, how he's playing this year, you know, it's not great. I think it's decent. And it's, it was kind of what it was expected. It was going to take a while for, you know, him to get adjusted and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, I would uh, – for like Ubre. Maybe maybe it's something else. Yeah, I think that's a a lot more a lot more worth it in my opinion. I would be okay with that. About Wiggins. Do that. <sighs> Wiggins balling. Nah, he is balling. Nah, you know, nah, I, you know I'd good. rather have Wiggins. I'd rather have Wiggins than Oladipo to be honest with you. Interesting. What about if yeah. you had to give up Wiggins to get like maybe Steven Adams and Lonzo Ball? I love the thought of, of Adams because, yeah, like you said, we are starving for help at the center right now, starving. It, it's bad, bad in Golden State. But uh, I, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I, it, I'd see it, it makes sense and I see it, but I don't know. Being a fan, I don't know. I'm, I've am i been impressed with Wiggins, especially as of late, you know, with Curry out uh, over the weekend and he put up 40. Uh, you know, he has the best three-point percentage of his career this season. Uh I like Wiggins. I like Wiggins a lot. I wasn't that big on him until he came to Golden State, and I've you know I've got to watch him a lot more and stuff. And and I really like Wiggins, so I probably wouldn't be a fan of any trade they did involving him unless it blew me away. Let's go into the Raptors. The Raptors, like I mentioned, they're um, potentially going to trade Kyle Lowry, but it, the reports are saying that it's almost inevitable that they're going to trade uh, Norman Powell by the trade deadline. I feel like he's a name that just recently popped up here. And that's another guy that's been playing very well over the last month, maybe, give or take. I mean, he had a 40-point game the other week. I mean, it might have been last week. Um, so that's definitely some value there. I don't know who they're targeting as far as who they're wanting to trade to or trade for. But, um, but Kyle Lowry, as the other player that was in the news as far as potentially being traded, I think Philly might have been interested in them at one point and uh, the Miami Heat. What do you think about uh, either one of those guys going to another team or maybe both of those guys uh, potentially staying? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not too familiar with, with Norman Powell. I do know – I mean, obviously I know who he is, and I know he's been playing good as of late. So uh, I, think, I think both guys make sense. To me, I know, you know a lot more about Lowry. Lowry, in my opinion, I don't want to say he's not what he used to be. I think his role has lessened some since the emergence of Fred Van Fleet. And I don't think that he puts up what he used to uh, when Kyle Lowry was, you know, talked about as one of the best point guards in the league uh, to that. And, you know, like I said, you know, Van Fleet's kind of taken over that team. You know, uh, I'm big on Siakam. I really like uh, Siakam. And I think that Atlanta – 
it makes sense for them to trade Lowry, in my opinion. Like I said, I'm not too familiar with Norman Powell and, and everything he does, so I'm not going to speak much on him. But, yeah, the Lowry thing. A couple of years ago, I would have said no. But now, you know, with Van Fleet kind of taking over that lead role of that team and, um, you know, Siakam um, getting better. Well, I don't know about this season, but the past couple, uh, every season getting better. Uh, I see I see why they would be open to trading Kyle Lowry. Give me the uh, the news that you heard about John Collins. Yeah, just just doing research for the podcast, I saw John Collins was – there's two teams. Who was it? It was the Kings and – what was the other team I said? I think the Mavericks. Yeah, yeah, the Mavericks and the, the Sacramento Kings were uh, contacting Atlanta about trading for John Collins. Now that Kings trade, I'm interested to see what would be involved there. I know uh, they had some issues with Buddy, Buddy Hield over the uh, offseason. I'm not sure if he's somebody that would be involved in this particular trade or maybe uh, Marvin Bagley, you know, with some of the injuries, maybe they're wanting to do a big man swap. But it would be interested, interesting to see if um, the Mavs could pull off this trade, especially if they don't get some of the other big guys that's kind of floating out there that could be traded or, or bought out. But um, – he's a dynamic guy that could score and definitely rebound. So I like him on the Mavs team. Like I kind of hope that the Mavs pull that off and whatever it takes to acquire him this season. Yeah. See, I, I 100% agree with what you're saying to some extent. I agree with why Sacramento and uh, the Mavericks are interested in him and their, uh, you know, their need for his services, especially the Mavs, like you said, um, the Bagley, the Bagley Collins deal would be interesting, just kind of to swap bigs. But here's my take on that: I 100% think Atlanta does not need to trade him. You know, Atlanta is the hottest team in the NBA right now. You know, uh, we did a podcast what last week or the week before about the standings in the East, and the Mavs were, or not the Mavs, excuse me, the Hawks were, you know, weren't weren't even in the playoffs, and now they're the four seed in the East, and that's because they've won eight straight games. I think Atlanta is very, very good since Nate McMillan took over. They look like a totally different team. I don't know what he said to those guys, but I think, like I said, you know, winning eight games in a row, get some good opponents. It's not, you know, it's not all, you know, bottom feeders. It's, you know, the Lakers and, you know, good good teams they've beaten. And um, I think they need to do everything they can right now to keep that core intact. You know, Josh Collins, John, excuse me, John Collins is, you know, a young talent. You know, he's you know, just uh, the last game against the Lakers, you know, um, you know, Trey Young didn't do much. Uh, I think he, I don't know, had 10, 15 points, something like that, not his normal numbers. And Collins snapped. You know, he picked up the slack. He he took over that game. And I've always been big on John Collins. But, yeah, I do not at all think they should trade him. I think Atlanta has everything you need. DeAndre Hunter is about to come back, too. I was speaking on Atlanta, you know, that just to add more firepower. You know, I think their team is very deep. They have a lot of good depth, and I, I think it, it would be smart for Atlanta to not trade John Collins and to try to keep this train rolling and this momentum going. Yeah, it's interesting why uh, – well, the reason is behind trading John Collins. I don't know if it's a team chemistry thing between him and and Trey Young as far as that being the, the main reason why they possibly would want to trade him. But, yeah, he definitely has a lot of potential, and he's still a very young guy, not – uh, really anything going on there with the injury history. So that's just the story within itself. I would, wouldn't mind exploring, but, you know, like I said, if the Mavericks could pull this off, I, I, hats off to the Mavericks. Like, oh, it'd be great for the that. Mavericks, yeah. Now let's get to the two big names that uh, the players that look like they probably won't get traded just because of their contracts. So they're, they're looking like buyout market uh, caliber players. That's LaMarcus Aldridge and Andre Drummond. Um, I think LaMarcus Aldridge, from what I read, was that he was definitely interested in going to the Miami Heat if he was bought out, which we had talked about that in, I think, a podcast last week as well, as far as potential destinations for him and what the Miami Heat could do or should do. So that would be a big power move for them as far as not losing anything to pick up a guy uh, – like that as far as the depth and and the big situation there and they could have I guess Kelly Olenek come off the bench and just have him as a reserve player but having LaMarcus Aldridge who um, you know occasionally could shoot a three or two uh, during a game but 
just another big rebounding presence and maybe some rest relief for uh, Bam down the, uh, you know, in the middle of the game so he could play more down the stretch at a, a higher level. Yeah. Yeah, I, they did just trade Myers Leonard too. So, you know, that's one a big man they lost. So, yeah, it makes sense. I uh Yeah, I don't I don't disagree with that. I do think he would he would fit in good there. I do see the potential, you know, to take some pressure off Bam and uh I do see that, but dude, I just I just every time I see Aldridge, man, I just think of Boston. I'm like, man, Boston, Boston. needs to make a push for him. Boston needs help. They're Fill them in reeling on the right now. Situation. How many games Boston, have they lost? Did they win tonight? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they won the they, night, I think. They, they yeah, they won. Like, what, previously lost four out of five games? They're, yeah, they're like they're reeling. Sinking like they, the they were, standings. what, I think fourth. I think they were fourth in the they were standings. Fourth and they're all the way, to the all the way down to – Yeah, they're seventh now. I mean, they're they're dropping. They're dropping. Uh, so I just think I just think Boston needs to do something. And they need to do something bad or, you know, they might not even make the playoffs at this point. It's not looking good for them. And so uh, I do see the the Aldridge fit in Miami. I don't disagree with that. But man, I just if I'm Boston, man, I gotta you gotta do something. And I think Aldridge would fit in great there. They need big man help. Tristan Thompson ain't the answer. They need they need a more dominant uh, person inside. And I think Aldridge would be that guy. I think Boston still makes the playoffs once again. I think they're just too good of an organization, not just uh, you know what's what you see on the court. Brad Stevens is a great coach, but Danny Ainge, he's going to pull something off. I think there's something coming. He's, he's got some more. He's going to go in for sure. Um, but I think it's just a domino effect. Like, okay, fishing it out. Who all is available and what all do we have to give up for in each scenario for each player? Because they got assets. So they're just calculating, okay, buyout versus um, trade market and how much are they giving up. So he's, he's definitely doing some calculations. So yeah, look for Boston. We'll probably give an update on them because I'm sure by uh, the deadline on Thursday, they have uh, they would have made a trade or or pick somebody else up that would have uh, definitely helped their team to grow uh, down the stretch and hopefully climb back up in the standings, maybe to five or four by the end of the regular season. But um, Andre Drummond, you know, he's another big name, probably the biggest name to be honest that's left out there and with this contract being so large, it looks like he might not be traded. But I did find some news. Um, if he is on the buyout market, he's interested in the Lakers and the Nets, you know, two contending teams, uh, basically what some people would see as the best in each conference as far as a talent pool uh, when they're all healthy. But I did also see something about the Knicks could possibly step in and disrupt things. And that would also include, you know, him being bought out, but outside of um, him being on like a veterans minimum contract with the Lakers or the Nets to win a championship, the Knicks could sign him to a multi-year deal that would be worth more than the veterans minimum. So, you know, maybe not the most ideal situation for winning a championship, but that brings an interesting dynamic to the Andre Drummond uh, rumors or, you know, where he could go because if if he wants the money, but he also wants to uh, have an opportunity to make the playoffs and grow into something as far as fitting into a team that's still building, then that would be interesting. But obviously a more win now situation would definitely be the Lakers or the Nets. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's interesting. That's uh, I hadn't heard that, that news about, uh, about the Knicks, but yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. I think like you touched on, it would just depend more on his intentions and what he wants out of this season, you know, he could, you know, go to the Lakers or Nets, and in my opinion, you know, be almost guaranteed unless something crazy happens, you know, uh, a spot in the Eastern or Western Conference Finals, at least, uh, based on where he goes. You know, the Knicks, like you said, a, a multi, multi-year multi deal worth more. So, you know, if he wants to chase the money, you know, maybe be an, uh, an asset for the Knicks and somebody they can – build around and get better because they're doing amazing this year you know that would make a lot of sense but um yeah I just I just I just think he's gonna go to the Lakers I think they they need too much help I like I've said before I would love to see um Brooklyn get them I'd love to see Brooklyn get them I think that's probably the one piece they need if, if like Brooklyn gets their hands on them I say that's it for Brooklyn I'll have them my favorite to win the finals but uh I think it'll be the Lakers if I had to put my prediction on that 
Yeah, I uh, also wanted to plug in that I forgot to mention that Chicago is interested in them. So I'm not sure what Chicago is uh, trying to do there. I guess they're trying to keep everybody intact and add. Um, I had talked about maybe they should potentially trade Zach Levine, but um, that's for another time. But yeah, the Lakers definitely look like um, a place where he could definitely fit at the moment as far as helping their team um, in a role that he would possibly thrive in compared to what he might be able to do with the Nets as far as, uh, you know, competing for the ball and, uh, and a, a lack of other words. But yeah, just to wrap this up as well, uh, DeMarcus Cousins is still floating out there. So let's not forget about him. But like I said before, this is a domino effect type of game that uh, the GMs are playing. So, you know, look for him to definitely be picked up by a team. But I think until some of these other big names fall and, and move around that he will be left on the back burner. But you know, he's definitely going to be a, a value to a team that picks him up. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. All right, thank y'all for uh, for tuning into this update, and we're going to probably try to ride this out this week as far as you know, providing more information and staying up to date with these trades and buyout rumors until um, Thursday, March twenty fifth is is the deadline.